Hello, hello and welcome and thanks for tuning in to Thought for the Day brought to you from All Saints in Swanage, Dorset. It's great that you can join us. I'm Michael Campbell, I'm one of the church wardens at All Saints. As I mentioned yesterday, at All Saints we prayerfully consider what verse we should be focusing on for the year. And the verse for 2021 is Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we focused our thoughts on the God of hope, and today we go on to consider what the Bible has to say about trusting in him, or having faith in him. Through these difficult times and whatever we are going through, as Psalm 62 verse 7 says, O oh my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. Trust in him at all times, you people, and pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. The Oxford Dictionary defines trust as a firm belief that something or someone is reliable, true or able to do something and is similar to the word faith, which is defined as complete confidence or trust in something or someone. So for the purposes of today's brief thoughts, I will be using the thought to trust in or having faith in as meaning the same. In the Bible, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 says, Now faith is the confidence or trust in what we hope for and the assurance about what we don't see. Another version puts that faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, faith, which is a now word, gives hope, which is a future, a sure grounding because it is based on knowing God in relationship with him and trusting in his promises to us. Verse 6 goes on to say that without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now many people seem to have a sense that there perhaps there is a God, but he may seem rather distant. Perhaps you may be one of them, as I certainly was for many years. My own story is that growing up through Sunday school, teaching I believed that there was a God and Jesus was a historical figure who did amazing things and died on a cross, but it seemed quite distant. However, there came a time in my life when I became much more hungry to know God for myself. I recall an experience on a train travelling back to London from Bristol, having been to university for interview there, and I had an amazing two-hour conversation with a man called Richard, who clearly had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I said to God in prayer later, Lord, please reveal yourself to me so I can know you in the same way that that person clearly does. To cut a long story short, within a few months of that conversation, a friend invited me to a local church where I heard the good news about Jesus and his sacrificial work on the cross for my sins and the fact that he was alive and wanted to be my friend and have a relationship with me. I knew these things in my head as a child growing up, but in that service the penny dropped and it was as if the knowledge of God in my head went into my heart. Hallelujah. When we sang the hymn, Tell Me the Old, Old Story, which ends with Christ Jesus makes you whole, I knew in my heart that it was true and that Jesus was alive and well and loved me enough to die for me, even if I was the only person in the whole world and he wanted a relationship with me. I later found out that this is the work of the Holy Spirit, God present with us now, who draws us near, reveals Jesus to us and helps us 
to have faith in him. I could go on, but time is limited. So how do we get faith? Romans 10, verse 17, paraphrase, says, Faith comes by hearing the message of Christ. So as we hear the good news about Jesus living and dying for us, the Holy Spirit is able to energise that word to give us faith. The important thing about faith or trust is not how much you have, but where it is focused. In the Bible it says if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, apparently one of the smallest seeds, then it has the potential to move mountains and nothing will be impossible with God. The final thing that faith works by love, as it says in Galatians 5 verse 6, when it comes to a relationship with God and we realise how much he loves us, faith can easily rise in our hearts. So there we briefly have it. Faith looks at the present, hope looks at the future. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and faith works by love. Faith is active. A simple practical example would be if you trust that a chair will support your weight or water will support you so you can swim. These only come true if you actually sit on the chair or go into the water and swim. We read in the Bible in Genesis that when God spoke to Abraham, calling him to go from his country to a land he would be shown, he trusted and obeyed and went forth, responding to God's call, even though he didn't know where he was going. So that is faith, and faith is completed as we respond to his word in obedience. So it's wonderful to know that God, who loves us so much to die for us, he wants us to come into relationship with him. Tomorrow we will consider what it means to have fullness of joy. But for now, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much to die for us. And you want us to have relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. So wherever we are on our journey of faith, will you increase our trust in you? And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.